Uh, Ashok Shah is with us, CIO at London and Capital. Yanis uh, Kontupoulos is Group Chief Investment Officer at Eurobank EFG. Um, what's interesting, I think, is you're both very much on the same page when it comes to the emerging market equity opportunity at this point. Relative to Europe and to the North American market, why emerging for 2013? Um, if you don't mind, I shall. Sure. <laughs> well, the, economically speaking, this is where you expect the surprise, the positive surprise. You're going to get some positive payback from uh, policy, both on the monetary policy side and fiscal policy side, in 2012 into 2013. Now, the uh, question mark, I would say, in terms of putting all your eggs into that particular basket is that over the course of the last few months, uh, several of these markets have run a lot. So you have to uh, differentiate a bit. I think you have, as I said before, pick specific markets, not just go for regions or the whole area on its own, and possibly start thinking about uh, the effects. I think the effects gives you a little bit more uh, upside here because it will allow the upside as the economy comes in and maybe some questions about inflation coming in or tightness coming in in terms of policy to be absorbed first positively by the currency mm -hmm. and secondarily uh, by other asset classes. So I would say I would do two things. First be specific on the market mm -hmm. and also go for local currency. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's undeniably true, but if you think about 2013 and 2014, probably 80% uh, of the world's growth incrementally is going to be generated by emerging economies, and therein lies why you need to have exposure to the emerging market. That's where the growth is going to take place. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this growth is going to do a lot of things. Not only is it going to keep the corporate earnings momentum, you know, very positive, but at the end of the day, it's going to create more employment and this good consumption cycle going on. So there's lots of opportunities uh, all over the place. And our preference really to date actually has been to be very aggressively into the emerging market debt, both on the hard currency and the local currency, and they've been spectacular. And of course, also for emerging market equities, those who can have higher risk appetite. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, uh, you know, the volatility of the emerging market equities is probably about 50% more than mature markets. So you know, if you have the risk allowance, there's plenty of mileage left all across the board. Yes, many of the markets, India and China, have done extremely well. But I think there's a lot more left in it after a consolidation phase. Some of the smaller markets, of course, they can become illiquid and therefore they can actually rise very sharply on the way up. And that's roughly what we are witnessing right now. There's a stampede to get in. The frontier markets are also beginning to you know, jump up simply because there isn't much trading volume, you know, a little bit of money flows and they move very, very rapidly. So for, for preference, I think that you know, lower risk uh, approaches to local currency debt markets look highly attractive in a world of very low interest rates, continued liquidity injection. So the liquidity is going to leak into all this marketplace. So plenty of scope to create a very diversified portfolio out there. It's interesting that um, we've had um, a reappraisal of emerging and frontier almost off the back of a concerted effort by the Fed to reliquify the world and support a recovery and growth in the United States. But I have to say that fourth quarter GDP number has started people scratching their heads. And I was interested, Art Cashin was on CNBC yesterday in the States saying the one thing people aren't pricing in is a recession in the United States. And if 2012 growth is in at one, one and a half percent rather than the two, two and a half that people were looking for, that's a quite negative lead indicator of recession prospects yes. for the US, but nobody's got that in their model. Well, it's opposite. Perversely, the worse the economic outlook is, better the outlook for asset markets simply because that means continuation and deepening of the quantitative easing, which is what is driving the risk markets. So it's, it's the other way around. If the economic prospects were to improve dramatically, uh, then there'd be a withdrawal of the central bankers you know, from the help they're giving, which then the asset markets will much harder to go further. You say that, but uh, when I look for correlations, and I know it's breaking down to some extent, um, the claims number has actually worked quite closely with the S&P, and yet claims didn't look so great this week. I mean, nobody's saying, OK, the recovery's over. But I'm starting to wonder whether, actually, you can just buy the reflation driven by the Fed and accept that that's going to work for you in all asset classes, where is the risk on opportunity? I think most people end up with this conclusion, and that's why they're stepping in. So I think it's, this is the, the natural end of the thought process, and as such, uh, they will, and I think you're right, but uh, they will do so 
uh, very much knowing that this particular numbers, anything that comes from the labor side in the U.S., has uh, assumed a much greater importance than it did last year and the year before. Do you get a better re-entry price this quarter? I think you will, yeah. This is, this is not a year of trends. People have come in thinking that's going to be a year of trend. I think that was 2012 and most people missed it. Uh, this is unfortunately a year of ups and downs, a year of range, and that's absolutely fine. The only mental preparation you need to do yeah. is that you need to remember that you should sell as many times as you would buy. <laughs> Yanis, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, Yanis joining us from Eurobank EFG. You're going to stay with us, so we'll come back. Stay tuned. You're watching Sportbox.